The Olden World, written by Tsar Yoshi. Chapter 383 Point of Contact There's a ship on the horizon, Shinesrock murmured, seated at the Immortal Dream's controls. Slipstream looked up from the book held in a wing, relaxing in the co-pilot seat. Oh? Hmm, I think you're right. That does look like a ship. Do we have a spyglass? There should be one around here, Shinespark muttered, searching the room with her telekinesis. I'm kind of surprised this is the first ship we've seen, actually. Really? Slipstream put her book down, opening tiny cabinets and joining in the search. How come? Shinespark grunted, locating a spyglass and passing it to Slipstream. How come I'm surprised? Ships from Iron Ridge should still be arriving in the Empire now, so they wouldn't know to stop sending any yet. Right? Slipstream shook her head, extending and holding up the glass. It's a very long trip directly from Anridge to the Empire. Since the Empire relies a lot on rented Varsidelian ships to make the journey overseas, they typically have a shorter range because Varsidel cities are closer together and they don't need to develop longer range technology. So the primary route is to go northwest from the Empire and make a stop at the Varsidel coast before going on to Anridge. Non-stop express voyages like ours are much less common because there are fewer ships that can manage them. Yakakistan would have a similar problem, but they've committed more to air travel and have more long-range ships and a refueling station in the mountains. Huh. Shinespark shaded her vision with a hoof, though the morning sun was already high enough not to get in her eyes. So this is a direct flight? They probably have no idea anything's happened in Iron Ridge, and I wonder if we should warn them to turn back. We could, Slipstream held her chin with a feather. We're less than halfway to the Empire still, so they might not be able to make it all the way back and have to continue anyway. But they should be able to make it to a port city if they turn straight north and follow the coast, and maybe they could warn Varsidel not to send any more ships to Iron Ridge? I'd imagine Varsidel already knows, Shinesback replied. They would know ships have stopped coming at least, I think. How far away is the nearest Varsidel city again? A week or two? Slipstream nodded. Depending on the ship's speed, they may have noticed ships have stopped arriving, or maybe not. They might not know why, though. Then we should parley. Shinespark tightened their focus on the controls, slightly altering their trajectory. Go find out who wants to fly across and who wants to stay to pilot the ship. Unless they want to come to us. Blee, Shinespark, and Gerardo stood on the Dream's deck as the other ship drew near the mountainous shore, a distant line on the horizon behind them. Slipstream was piloting. Shinespark held a spyglass to her eye, studying the boat they were about to intersect with. Large and zeppelin-based, it looked like a freighter, with a bulky, windowless hold and gigantic propellers in the back and sides pushing it forward. There was no deck between the gondola and balloon, and a tiny box in the front that looked to be for crew and controls. Stratus was emblazoned on its side in wide, burnt-brown lettering. Who was it who was on about airships needing epic, non-generic names again? Valet teased, elbowing Shinespark with a wing. I believe that was you, Gerardo remarked with a subtly raised eyebrow. Nah, yeah. Valet stuck her tongue out. So, are we going over there, or are they coming over here, or what? Slipstream had caught the acceleration, and it looked like the other ship was slowing, too. Flying unicorns are unusual, Shinespark muttered. Let's let them come so I don't put them on edge. Or I could carry you, Valet Ham, the mischievous grin forming on her face. Shinespark took an uncertain step away. Before you two engage in any shenanigans, Gerardo quietly interrupted, it seems they are, indeed, intending to board us. Behold, a wing of three flyers had left the stratus and were quickly soaring toward the dream, and in a matter of minutes, they were lighting on the deck. All three were decked out in clean white suits with blue stripes around the collars, and the leader, a tall brown stallion, raised an interested brow. Greetings, he offered, a reserved, dignified tone in his voice. We noticed your unusual ship from afar. Are you friend or foe? He glanced suspiciously at Valet. 
friends of civilization, I assure you, Gerardo announced, stepping forward and offering a talon, even though Shinespark was the captain. Are you, perchance, bound for Anrich? We are, one of the leader's companions, a grape-colored mare, replied, looking slightly more at ease. And you for the Empire? Shinespark nodded, also stepping forward. You shouldn't go to Ironridge, she quickly advised, main blowing in the wind. There was a sudden war about two weeks ago. The skyport and power systems are currently destroyed, and every ship that arrives is stuck and has no way to refuel to get out. I'm Shinespark, and my crew is traveling to inform the other nations and seek aid in rebuilding. A war in Iron Ridge, the third visitor, uh, Griffin spoke. Did Valsadel invade or something? Thought they were too busy with their own affairs. About time that conflict started drawing more attention. I've been saying the rest of the world ought to get involved since the Empress was killed. Not Valsadel, Yakistan. Shinespark shook her head. They played the districts against each other until they sparked a civil war. Things have calmed down now, but if you're going to Iron Ridge, make sure to have enough fuel to reach another city afterward without refueling there. If you can make it somewhere north along the coast, I strongly advise going there first. A civil war in Einrich? With your Kyakistan as outside aggressors? The brown stallion leaned in closer. I find that somewhat hard to believe. Considering as we barely escaped with our lives? Yeah, Valet gave him a serious look. I mean, you can keep going if you want, but you're the ones who'll get stuck there. The visiting griffin seemed to consider this. I can't think of any reason they'd be lying, Captain. Don't seem like those pirates from earlier. Pirates? Shinespark looked alarmed. In the skies? I would have thought the short range of airships forces them to stick to the sea. How? The grape mare shook her head. See once, they sent up a flume of smoke from the boat to make them look like they were in distress. It's a common trick, but easy enough to see through if you drop them an emergency dinghy, follow them a while, and it doesn't appear to spread. Most pirates won't actually burn their boat down for a shot at getting yours. Gerardo bowed. The tip has appreciated, though I don't believe we have any intentions of abandoning the sky, and hopefully should be safe from unwanted surprises. He grinned at Valet, who winked back. Anyway, we'll be cautious entering Anridge in case there's any fighting, the mayor assured her. Thanks for the tip, but you're still going regardless? Gerardo looked concerned. You will get stuck, you know. Yeah, the second griffin also looked uneasy. Remember the last ship we crossed, Captain? Those passengers who insisted on telling us something big might be about to go down? There might actually have been trouble in Iron Ridge. You're right, the captain acknowledged. But even at maximum capacity, we like to range to make it in and out of Iron Ridge reliably without at least one stop in Zanguel, and the situation in Varsadel changes too quickly for my comfort to count on. Unless you have more current news on the war there as well. Everyone on Shinespark's side grimaced. We could go for Barbadar, the other griffin offered helpfully, at which the grape mare made a face. Anridge is safe, but has no way to refuel, and the economy is likely in shambles enough that you may not get paid for your delivery, Gerardo told them. Whatever you decide, you would be safe there, if war areas are concerned. No, wartime Varsadel is, uh, the grave mayor hung her head, not my favorite place. Up to you, Captain. Then I'll make my decision soon. Uh, thank you for warning us, the leader said, and with a bow, all three took off, soaring back toward the ship. For a moment, Shinespark, Valet, and Gerardo stared as they left, then sighed. I should get us moving again, Shinespark remarked, trotting back toward the bridge. Well, I suppose Varsidel's discovery of the fate of Anridge may well hinge on the whims of this freighter captain, Gerardo declared, ruffling his feathers. There's little we can do about it, as we are bound for the opposite corner of the map. Oh well. Valet raised an eyebrow. What is wartime Varsidel like? Nobody ever talks about it. Also, both sailor suits were... Mm, classy. She winked, hugged herself, and shivered. Ha <laughs> ha ha, Gerardo chuckled meekly. Indeed they were, and wartime Varsadel is a mess of legendary proportions suitable only for hardy adventurers and afraid to answer their problems with guile, violence, and running away. Granted, I say that as a hardy adventurer who would not live his life any other way, so take that with a grain of salt. I thrive there, though others might very much not. 
Mm, that's nice. Valet strolled toward the door below Dax, tail flicking lazily. I'm gonna go do whatever and not let us fall for pie traps. Have fun! End of chapter 383.